with this coronavirus thing that we have going on, um, we have an unforeseen circumstance um, and it's preventing us as contractors uh, our ability to complete the work. Um, so that concept, that contractual concept, uh, you know, lays the groundwork for you to seek an equitable adjustment for the, some of the costs that are occurring. It's unfortunate this occurred, uh, but it doesn't mean that your company as a general contractor needs to go under because of a delay that is completely out of your control. Uh, we have seen in some states that they have closed down jobs. Uh, the state has decided that they're gonna close down the jobs themselves. Uh, having given choice to contractors in that case. Uh, in other cases, uh, you know, different organizations has prevented uh, construction from occurring. So with that concept in mind, I wanna focus on, on, you know, on federal project projects. And I'm gonna go to the, the uh, CFR, the Code of Federal Ag Regulations, the Federal Acquisition Regulations specifically under the Code of Federal Regulations. And if you look in there, it, you know, under sections, uh, 52.249, that's one. Uh, the other one is section uh, 52249 TAC 8. Um, and then um, go on to uh, 52.242. And that goes over suspension work. And the last one is 52.242-15, uh, stop work order. So, under those four general uh, FAR clauses, whether you know under the 48 CFR, um, you know 249.14, 249 TAC 8, 242 TAC 14, and 242 TAC 15, these are all FAR clauses that stipulate, you know, what do we do when we have an unforeseeable situation? Who pays for it? How do we deal with the cost involved there? And that's important to us as contractors because it's not like we want to make money off of this situation, but we don't want to lose our company or, or you know, be in a position where it compromises our ability to employ people because of that, uh, because of this situation. So you know, it's not the government's fault. It's not our fault. It's really nobody's fault. It's just the, the reality of the situation. So how do we deal with that? Um, you know, we can we can look at the far section, excusable delays. We can make sure this falls under an excusable delay, uh, which it does. Uh, if you read through, and you know, I'm just going to briefly touch on this, but if you read through uh, excusable delays, it says, um, if an excusable delay is de, uh, is de, is a default of any tier, so a general contractor, subcontractor, um, because of a failure to perform a contract under the terms of failure, uh, caused beyond the control or without fault or neglect, and it and it specifies in there. It says number one, acts of God, um, or the public or of the public entity acts of government in either uh, sovereign or contractual capacity fires flood epidemics uh, quarantine restrictions and a lot of those apply here so uh, we know that this is considered an excusable delay under far clause 52.249 tac 14 uh, which was put in place april of 1984. so that's the first one that we want to we that we want to discuss i want to discuss the second one uh, we can discuss is the defaults, okay? Now, um, there's a lot in here about, you know, the government's right to terminate, terminate by convenience, but that doesn't mean that the owner or the government doesn't have a, a, some responsibility there if they terminate the contract. Many government contracts have, have a clause of terminate for convenience, and in these cases where we have an epidemic, they can terminate for convenience, but that still doesn't mean that there is no cost involved to terminate in that contract. Uh, that is outlined in FAR Clause 52.249 TAC 8, uh, primarily on fixed price contracts. Now we move to the, the, the two latter um, FAR Clauses, 
we talk about suspension of work and it's really clear in the suspension of work that it says in here a claim under this clause shall be allowed for number one any cost incurred more than 20 days before the contractor can notify the contracting officer uh, unless the claim in the amount stated is asserted in writing as soon as practical after termination or suspension so timing is of essence here um, if you were to be terminated you need to act quickly um, you need to make sure that you exercise your rights um, and uh, under clause 52.242 suspension of work it talks to you how how do you perform what do you do you know um, so it says right there that for unforeseeable time suspension or delay uh, by an act of the contracting officer the contracting officer's failure uh, to act um, you know and in other situations that are all covered based on this coronavirus situation that we currently have so the suspension of work basically lays that out it's very important that uh, we get in writing in practical terms um, you know of what the termination agreement is going to be what delays you're going to be incur, and what final payment will be allotted to you you know take a piece of equipment you have a piece of equipment on the job site you have to demobilize that piece of equipment there is a cost involved there and so we want to make sure that we get uh, what is justifiably deserved for 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 having to demobilize moving to the last clause it's uh, uh, 48 CFR 52.24 uh, dash 15 stop work order if you get a stop work order um, this was implemented in uh, 1989 um, and it basically says that the contracting officer uh, stops work uh, terminates the work um, whether it's for convenience or fault and then it, and it goes on to say that if work is stopped um, there's a period of time um, that you could get an extension if you were to come back to the job um, and that increase in time also means an increase in money obviously time and money are forever linked in construction and we want to make sure uh, that we're properly compensated for that um, and uh, this work stoppage as I said before um, it, it may not be to cancel work although they may terminate the contract it may just be to suspend it in either regard um, as a contractor you can go through the steps to seek equitable adjustment for the cost that you were uh, will have incurred so with all this talk about what's going to occur uh, you know in construction and in other in other fields that are out there uh, we want to be aware of our rights so that uh, we can properly be compensated as companies as organizations uh, to what's you know what is fair right and reasonable this is not uh, you know these clauses were put in place to make it to try to to uh, create a, a a set of standards and and as I said before the coronavirus is not the fault of the government it's not the fault of the contractor but it is inevitably still a delay and when you have a delay there's cost involved here and as a contractor you have to understand you have to submit a request for those for that loss of time that loss of money or do, the default of the contract whether you know maybe convenience or for termination uh, timing is key if you're you know interested or you're in a position where uh, you know you are defaulted because of convenience or cause because of this situation or others and um, and you're seeking compensation um, I encourage you to engage someone like myself and my company ace consulting to help you formulate that response to seek equitable adjustment and that's the key here We're not trying to get get one over on anybody we just want to be properly compensated uh, small businesses run this country and without businesses uh, out there like you um, then we're not going to have the jobs that we need once this uh, this epidemic is over with. So that's all I have for today. I, I wish everybody well. Um, hope we get back to work soon. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but uh, I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get you know some of the projects we have delayed back on track. And I hope we can get past this uh, this current situation and we come on the other side better for where we're at. So if